Now, the Conservatives have taken aim at Labour's manifesto pledge, claiming they have found a £58 billion black hole in the party's spending plans. Jeremy Corbyn said that he would bring rail, electricity and water industries into public ha hands, saving households around £220 a year. Well, the Shadow Business Secretary, Rebecca Long-Bailey, joins us now live from Salford. Good morning to you. Is there a £58 billion pound black hole in your party's spending plans? No, there certainly isn't. Um, I think the Conservatives are trying to cast aspersions over what would be a very profitable deal for the government. Let's remember that taxpayers and bill payers have seen their energy and water bills significantly increase in recent years. Even the Competition and Markets Authority said that bill payers were paying over £2 billion in excess of what they should have been paying. Now our proposals are firstly to create regional supply companies. That doesn't involve any element of bringing uh, companies into public ownership. It's about creating a local supplier to rival the big six and drive prices down. And the second element of the, our plan is to uh, bring the distribution and transmission networks of the energy sector into public ownership over time and also the water sector. Um, well, we were promised a fully costed manifesto by the shadow chancellor John McDonald. So many people were surprised at these big plans. We're talking about renationalising rail, energy, Royal Mail and the water industry. A lot of people surprised that those costings simply weren't in there. Why not? Well, in terms of accounting principles, the ONS and even the Institute for Fiscal Studies stated yesterday that expenditure or capital investment, should I say, such as this, wouldn't be referred to on a manifesto tax and spend spreadsheet in any event. It's a capital investment. What we'd be doing was taking over these companies, um, investing in them in the long term. We'd see a long term return. They're profitable co uh, companies at the end of the day. So it would be cost neutral for the exchequer overall. OK, but nationalising four industries is going to be an expensive business. How are Labour going to fund it? When you say cost neutral, what do you mean? Well, what we've said is we'll consult uh, in terms of compensation. It's a matter for negotiations between the relevant companies themselves and government, and a range of factors will be taken into consideration, such as the amount it's of dividends paid over the last sale. 10 to 15 years. You will be years, buying back the industries of... into public hands. Yes, well, as I said, we consult on that, but it would involve a range of discussions between the companies but and government But you must have themselves. some idea. You the must final have some figure, idea. The talk, final, talk to the, me about the water industry, for example. That's currently under public ownership. How much would it cost to get the water industry back into government hands? Well, as I said, the final figure itself, I wouldn't want to pin ourselves to a final figure because that would okay. be a matter How for negotiation. How much is it worth at the moment? How the much water, is the water industry the, worth? Between the water company... Well, there was an estimated cost of £32 billion put forward by experts. But as I said, that's not a final figure. It would pretend, it wouldn't it's certainly not. I've seen a figure time. today and that it would says be, £60 it would billion. Be, pounds. That's quite a big disparity. Well, I've not seen the figure that you've seen, but the expert figures that have been put forward uh, to myself and other experts across the field have suggested a rough figure of 32 billion, but that's not a final exact figure. As I've said, it will be a matter for negotiation between the government and the companies themselves. And they so it take could go up to 60 billion. It could these, go up to 60 billion pounds. These water How let's are you going look, to pay Let's for look it? at the current situation. These current water companies are in a significant amount of debt. Three water companies themselves actually paid out more in share dividends than they actually received in profits. It simply isn't sustainable. And in order to invest in the infrastructure they need, they've been taking out private debt at quite high interest rates. Okay, well, that will, now, all, come out, that will all come out in the negotiations, we would actually get then, debt as you at said. a lower interest rate. That will all come out in the Sorry negotiations, then, as you said. But eventually, there is going to be yeah. a, a price put on the water industry. How are Labour going to pay for that? Well, we've talked about a range of options. One of the most favourable ones is exchanging shares uh, for government bonds, which would see an outlay, of course, over time, but we would see profitability over the long term. And as I said, it would be cost neutral because the profits that we would receive from those companies, who are currently very profitable industries, that would go back into the exchequer. It would drive prices down and it would give us more money to invest on the infrastructure that we need to put, bring us up to a standard fit for the 21st century. And that certainly isn't the case at the moment. But those industries won't be as profitable if you take them over because you're promising to drive bills down, save uh, families up to £220 a year. How can you make as much profit if you're going to keep the bills down? Those sums won't add up. 
Well, these companies are paying vast sums of money in terms of share dividends to their shareholders. They're also paying quite high levels of interest rates in terms of loans that they've taken out to invest in their infrastructure. We wouldn't pay out the levels of dividends that shareholders currently get. That would be put back into the companies themselves or it would be put towards bringing bills down and investing in the overall uh, future of those companies. In terms of the debt repayments that these companies currently have, we would get a cheaper rate uh, as a public sector organisation than the private sector. So the debts themselves would actually be cheaper in the long run. And how long is this all going to take? Because obviously it has been said that you're going to have to negotiate with individual energy companies, water companies, rail franchises, and this could take up to 2022 when your leader will be in his 80s. Well, as I said, this is a long-term transitional plan. Our first priority is to create the regional supply companies. Now, that doesn't involve any element of taking things into public ownership. That's simply setting up regional supply companies. We already have a number in operation. Robin Hood Energy, uh, White Rose Energy in Leeds, Liverpool, Lecky. So there's currently uh, a pathway forwards for that. Over time, we would look at uh, improving the license arrangements of distribution network operators and the national grid license to give us the opportunity to bring bring those licenses to an end because at the moment it's absurd that we have certain companies who effectively hold our assets in perpetuity with no end date. It's not like a normal public sector contract where after a period of time you would retender if you weren't happy with it. That isn't the case with energy, water and electricity and it simply is not sustainable or acceptable in the long run. Okay. Let's remember this isn't a radical plan. Countries across the world have brought their energy and water sectors into public ownership. It's quite a standard approach by many uh, countries, not just to bring costs down, but also for overall security. OK, well, you are hoping that this is going to be a vote winner. You've got faith in that. It doesn't sound like one of Labour's biggest supporters has uh, any faith in the Labour Party at the moment. Len McCluskey says he doesn't think Labour can win this election. He says his hopes for the party's results on June the 8th are about preventing a Tory majority from increasing dramatically. He said 200 seats would be a success, uh, which would be the, uh, one of Labour's worst results since the 1930s. Well, I understand he's taking a very cautious approach, but we're in it to win cautious. it. Cautious? He's got a very bold and radical... He's not written us off. I understand why he's taken a cautious approach based on, on the polls, but we're in it to win it, and we've got a very bold and transformational manifesto on offer here. This isn't about tinkering around with the edges and trying to make a few improvements. This is about trying to rebuild our economy and setting it up for the 21st century so that we can have prosperity that's shared by the many and not the few. OK, Shadow Business Secretary Rebecca Long-Bailey, thank you for speaking to us here on Sunrise Sky thank News. Thank you.